Hi, everyone. It's Garth and Paul here. We just want to actually talk about the transition team so everyone has good clarity around it. So, Paul, why don't you kind of frame the transition team purpose and goals here? Well, the purpose of the transition team is to uh, work with identified areas within the church that need uh, some resolution or some uh, encouragement, maybe some tweaking. And uh, we are really thrilled with the fact that so many have stepped forward mm -hmm. to volunteer in this opportunity. And that this is going to be uh, basically because you're affirming these folk, um, a congregational-led effort to make sure that we've got everything in place to welcome a new pastor. So I'm, I'm really anticipating a, a, a good time. Uh, I myself um, am, am going to be a pastoral resource to the team. Garth will be coaching it. But the work's going to be done by the team members that uh, you select. So thank you so much for your interest in this uh, new transition effort for our church. And uh, I think it's going to be an exciting time uh, and uh, a lot of new ideas and uh, certainly a lot of discussion is going to come out of this transition experience. Yeah, that's well said. And I just wanted to comment a bit about uh, the process of how we got here because I believe a good process will will help provide good uh, results and good outcomes. So this concept of the transition team has been worked through with council and elders and uh, to the point where we got to the terms of reference of what it is and what it needs to concentrate on, presenting it to the congregation, asking for nominations. Um, there's been a lot of work to get to this point. And I just believe that um, you know, as we dialogue and work through this with the congregation, as Paul said, so many great things are going to come out of it. And interesting side note is I, I, I took the posture of when it came to nominations to just let the Lord bring people forward. I didn't go out and reach out to anyone. Paul didn't. And uh, so it's been very interesting to see what the Lord is doing amongst us. And so the vote on um, Tuesday the 16th, is really uh, affirming and everyone will have their name and the yes or no. And so we're asking everyone just to pray through it, watch the videos, uh, continue to ask questions, call me or Paul if you want and chat about it. And uh, it's a very open process. So we just believe that that uh, will help us as well. So I wanted to pass that on. So maybe Paul, just as we end this, what's kind of the one thing that you kind of most look forward to in this process and this team? What? Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, to this, too. Um, I think uh, the word that I'm going to use is empowerment. Mm. Um, uh, people are feeling, rightly or wrongly, that uh, they, they seem to have no um, lack of say or, or lack of participation within the church. And this process will be a means of empowering the congregation and making it possible for um, future Times when, when naturally, uh, as our as our culture and our world changes, we have to make adjustments as well in how to best present the gospel. And folks, we we really want to see this type of work go forward. So we want to uh, get across this idea of empowering the congregation to work as a team with the pastoral staff, with your elected council and um, representatives, and to really see and have a sense of ownership of what's going to be happening in our church. It's mm, good. I like that. Uh, my word is vision. I just look at, uh, if you look at like the Mississippi river, uh, when it, when it ends into the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, it's this huge wide body that almost looks like a, a lake or a sea in itself, but it starts off by collecting a whole bunch of, uh, tributaries and other small streams and it starts collecting and that's what vision does we got all these streams coming together and it just and the river will get wider and wider and the pathway will start being clearer so i just love that process and what the lord does to it it's it's a important part of our vision so looking forward to the months ahead okay. yeah. thanks folks for uh viewing and uh if you have any questions feel free to contact either garth or myself bye-bye everyone Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another Get to Know Your Transition Team nominee video. And so today we have Leslie. Hi, Leslie. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. 
Good. Why don't you tell, introduce yourself and, and let people know how long uh, you guys have been around FBC. Okay. We, uh, my name is Leslie Zeller and my husband, Matt, and I moved here with our two boys, David and Michael, in 1987. And uh, Matt was transferred with the bank and we told the boys they could choose the church because they were teenagers and we wanted to make sure that they were comfortable so our first time, first church was FBC, and the boys heard that they were having a youth uh, cycling trip around the San Juan Islands, and so that cemented it for them. And because Matt didn't want them to go with a bunch of people they didn't know, he went along too. So nice. that, that was the start. <laughs> That's a great story. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the transition team... Um, terms and, and call, call come out, what's what uh, laid on your heart? What What is your interest in doing this? Well, um, my love for our church and our mm. family, uh, church family. And uh, it's been a difficult year and a half since Pastor Rob left and COVID struck. And it just, uh, the Lord laid on my heart that maybe I could help. So uh, that's why I let my name stand. That's nice. Being obedient, right, Leslie? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's that's all we're asked to do, right? That's right. So that's good. Okay, so I've been asking people um, uh, what one word best describes what your hope is for the outcome of this process and why? Well, um, my word is unity, mm. and I've been doing a uh, study with Pastor John on the book of Colossians. Mm -hmm. And this past week, the scripture was uh, Colossians 3. And it's all I just want to read yeah, a please. few verses. Uh, the end of uh, verse 11 says, Christ is all and in all. And then so 12 says, so as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving each other whoever has a complaint against anyone just as the lord forgave you so also should you and verse 14 beyond all these things put on love which is the perfect bond of unity so that's where i came up with the word unity and i thought it was very fitting the scripture um, for a church body and uh, yeah so that's, that's where awesome. i got my word that's a good word. Well, unity is um, it's a great word, but it's also, there's so much power when when we are unified. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. beautiful. Well, thank you, Leslie, for uh, putting your name forward and for sharing with us today. And just a reminder to anyone watching this, Tuesday, March 16th is the day to vote. So we'll see you there and we'll see you soon. Leslie, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another session of Get to Know Your Nominees. Uh, we have Jeannie here today. So Jeannie, why don't you introduce yourself and let everyone know how long you've been around FBC. Okay, I'm Jeannie Perancho, and I've been at FBC uh, 20 plus years, 20 and a bit. So. That's great. Wow. I love the longevity of people. It's, it's fantastic. Okay, so obviously the Lord's put stuff on your heart uh, towards the transition team when it came up. And uh, I know I would love to know more and uh, people would love to know more about what, what prompted you to put your name forward. Okay, so I did not put my name forward. Uh, Rick did. Okay. Uh, Rick uh, Pridmore put my name forward and asked permission to let it stand. And I said yes. Uh, after prayer. Uh, a bit of prayer and talking to my husband. Uh, uh, so I let it stand uh, mainly because um, I think the other question that you had had asked us to ponder was what the one word that yes. came to mind. And unity was what came to mind for me. And I know that sounds very cliche. Uh, but for me, I just wrote it, I wrote a little blurb, and I thought it's probably better if I read it rather than just verbalize, because I'll forget something that I thought sure. was, so if that's okay. That's great, uh, yes. Okay. Unity is the first word that comes to mind when I think um, what I hope the transitional team can 
accomplish. I hope and pray, my hope and pray for uh, prayer for our entire congregation is spiritual strength, healing, and growth. Uh, we decided to settle at FBC 20 years ago because this was such an open hearted, welcoming church. And uh, we had come from another church where we felt um, not, not always included. And the thing that I found with First Baptist, the first day I walked in, people welcomed us, they uh, greeted us. And within a week, we had people from FBC, both of them have passed away now, Elma James, and Dick, I can't think of Dick's last name right now, but they came to our door with cookies. Like, how incredible is that? I had never experienced that at, from a church body. And for me, I just see that history of the people here and their amazing ability and resilience. And so for me, I really want to be a part of being able to bring us to a point where we can all see that again. And having said that, I know I've only got three minutes. Last night, I was praying um, on sharing today. And I have a little promise book that was my mom's. I had gifted it to her with Bible quotes. When you're feeling sad and happy or need, need different spiritual things. And I, uh, I prayed last night and I opened, I flipped my, my, um, my little marker to the next page. And it was guidance, which I found really interesting because mm. I had no was even in there and the scripture that was there and spoke so loudly to me it was from Isaiah 58 and it goes from 11 and 12 and I just want to share that Please do. Um, the, the Lord will guide you always he will satisfy your needs in a sun scorched land he will strengthen your frame you will be like a well-watered garden like a spring whose water waters never fail your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will rise up the raise up the age old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, mm -hmm. restorer of streets and dwellings. And that I just thought to me that spoke so strongly to what I hope we can be. I want to be called a repairer of walls. And so if I can, do anything to help that process. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I love that verse. I, that's it warms my heart. So, well, that's great. Thank you, Jeannie, and uh, everyone. You know, voting day is next uh, Tuesday. So, um, thank great. you, and thank you for that. And we will talk soon. Great. Thanks very much for calling. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another uh, get to know your nominee uh, recording. So. I got David here. David, why don't you introduce yourself and let people know how long you've been around FBC. Diane and I started attending FBC September 2016. I had just finished a professional forestry position on the mainland and I retired in Nanaimo. We became members of uh, Fellowship of, uh, excuse me, uh, FBC Nanaimo in uh, February 2018. So we've been involved at FBC for four, four and a half years now. Okay, nice. Okay, so the big question is, uh, you saw this team, uh, what led you to kind of put your name forward to it? What's, what's the Lord saying to you here? Well, Garth, uh, other members have expressed loss of trust in leaders over uh, related to our two elected boards. And I heard that the leadership style of our former associate pastor alienated some of our members. And I too became, uh, began to wonder if I could support leadership direction. So when the four objectives of the transition team were published, I saw an opportunity for renewal at uh, FBC Nanaimo. These uh, four um, objectives galvanized me, a commitment to healing and reconciliation, the first one, the second, improving two-way dialogue in our congregation with leaders, the third one, uh, review and recommend how our churches govern and start this long-term process, and the fourth one, vision, begin the process of listening and writing down what we as the family of God do and how we do it. So when these were announced, I began praying for others to step forward, not myself. <laughs> I developed a list of candidates. I think there was about 15 on my list and uh, that we were praying about. And then I phoned four of the key ones, uh, which have are proven leaders in our congregation. 
Sadly, only one of the four even indicated interest, and I'm not sure if they came forward. So at that point, I felt compelled to throw my hat in the ring and offer my services. There's a problem, though. I have kidney cancer now in my lungs, and my days are numbered. I was in hospital seven times in 2020 through emergency and, and three times already in 2021. So I love the church, the family of God, and want to stay involved always. However, when I resigned the mission chair position in September of 2020, poor health was a major factor. And, you know, the spring of 2021 is actually worse for health. So I have some misgivings there. Well, thank you for all the stuff you're battling and, and feeling the, the pull of the Lord. It's actually a beautiful picture. So thank you, David. So when you look forward to the end of this uh, transition team, is there a word that kind of best describes your hope or your prayer for what, what will be accomplished? Absolutely, Garth. Renewal is the word that I would mm. pick. Every time we uh, eat the bread and drink the, the juice at communion, we pledge to reflect. Does another member have something against us? Can we help make it right? So as each of us takes small steps to reach out to the other member who feels wronged or to whom we may have hurt, our congregation will experience renewal. Renewal, the quiet yet awesome presence in our lives of God, the Holy Spirit. That's what I hope the outcome of the transition team work is. Mm, that's awesome. I, I like words sometimes and words strike me and that word renewal is a great one. So. Anyways, David, thank you for your time and, and this recording. And a uh, reminder, March 16th, Tuesday is the voting day for the transition team. And we really look forward to uh, this next season ahead. So thanks, David. And thanks, everyone. I'm really happy and excited about this direction. And I feel it's got great potential for our church. And let's yeah. all uh, buy into it as much as we can, for sure. Amen, amen, amen. Thanks. Everybody, welcome back to another Get to Know Your transition team nominee i'm here with shannon hi shannon how are you i'm good thank you how are you excellent so um first question is introduce yourself and uh your background at fpc all right uh, my name is shannon gillespie i uh, was shannon hawker for a lot of years at fpc i have officially attended i think my entire life which is wow. almost 40 years um, and right now, four generations of my family go to First Baptist, so it's definitely um, my church home and the only church home I've ever known. Wow, so. cool. That's very cool. Okay, so uh, I'm very intrigued about, uh, as others are, about uh, what's, what has the Lord laid on your heart about putting your name up here for the transition team? Yeah, I think I, I realized the church is maybe at a bit of a crossroads, and for me, even coming into, I don't know, a, a different generation of my life, maybe, where um, I'm now, I grew up in the church, but now I'm a parent, and I have a daughter approaching youth group age, and um, Chris and I have both been involved over the years, and we really just, um, yeah, I just have a heart for seeing our church survive and thrive and be all that it can be and not let, you know, COVID or or staffing changes, or conflict or difficulties be something that um, is the end of the, the church family that I've known for so long. Yeah, amen. Well, I believe in thriving too, so <laughs> that's good. Um, so I'm asking everyone to pick a word and then explain that word, uh, what sort of you, your hopes or visions of the, the, this process. I think the word that came to my mind was intentional. Mm -hmm. um, I think I really would love to see our church come to a place where we're really intentional about who we are, who we want to be in our community, how we want to reach people for Jesus. And um, more than just we're a bunch of Christians that happen to have a building in Nanaimo, but that everybody just knows what we stand for and who we are and the message that we want to bring to our community. So I think that only comes with some really intentional planning and vision and leadership. So, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thanks Shannon. And uh, just a reminder, everyone knows, I think at this point, but Tuesday, March 16th is vote day. So um, we will see you then. And Shannon, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Jamie, another transition team nominee. So hi, Jamie. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You bet. 
So uh, first question, same question as everybody else, just uh, introduce yourself and your length of time at FBC. Okay, so my name is Jamie Crastel, and I've been going to this church for about 18 years. Nice. And people would recognize you from the platform mostly, right? Yes. Yes, I am a worship leader. Yeah. Okay, Jamie. So um, curious to know why, uh, what's the Lord put on your heart about this team and having your name put forward? Why don't you share about that? Absolutely. So I was um, brought the transition team. Someone called me and basically said, we'd love for you to be a part of it. And at first I didn't really feel like I was being called to the team. But then I started praying about it and I just felt this strong call from God to be a part of this team. And I just want everyone to feel welcome at our church and for us to be in a place where everyone is excited to be a member of our church and excited to be included. And so I feel like this transition team is a great start for that and a great way for us to start having that conversation. Nice. Yeah, conversations are always good. Um, okay, so as I've asked everybody else, uh, what is your one word um, that you sort of hope that comes out of this and then explain that one word? Yeah, I think the one word that I really want um, our transition team to focus on is clarity. Mm. Because like everything going on right now in the world and just with our church we need that clarity and we need to all be on the same page. And I feel like if we're not, then we're not fully a community in Christ. We need to all be on the same page and all feel hopefully the same about whatever we're moving towards. So I think clarity is the most important thing, at least for me coming along this transition team. Yeah, no, that's good. I was just reading this morning in uh, first Corinthians 10 or one, First 10, I think it was about be in harmony with each other. So that's kind of another way of putting clarity, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Well, Jamie, thanks for your time. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another session of uh, Get to Know Your Nominee. So uh, today we have Gord. Uh, Gord, why don't you, you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Gord Beerness. Um, I started attending First Baptist Church in 1986. Kara and I were married in First Baptist Church in 1987, and uh, I became a member in 1988. So I've been around for about 35 years. That's good. I got married in 86, so that's a good... Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll remember that. Um, so what led you to have your name put forward for the transition team, Gord? Well, I felt called to serve... Uh, on this team, and, and here's why. Uh, for me, it's been months of confusion and stress, and it appears that all we have done over the past seven or eight months is to disagree. Uh, some have fought to open the church uh, for safe worship. Others have fought to keep it closed. And I'm not saying that either one are right or wrong, but what I'm saying is the way that we handled our conflicts has not been great. And so I started really seeking God and asking, God, where are you in this whole situation? And he turned that question back on me and asked me, where am I in this whole situation? And the frank answer that I had to give was, I don't know. And shortly after that, I began to pray, reading scriptures, finding out what God would have me to do on all this. And the key theme that kept coming through was to love God and to love others, to love God and to love others. As it says in, in Luke 10, 27, that what we're supposed to love the God, love God with um, all of our hearts, all of our uh, souls and all of our strength. And we're to love others as ourselves. And that message was just driven home Bible study after Bible study and podcast and sermons. And it just was hitting me. And the bottom line, the takeaway for this whole thing for me was that it's not about me. Serving in the church is not about me and what I want. And so I, want, I would like to be a part of how can we do this better? How can we get to that place of mm. brotherly love mm. and, um, and really serve each other the way that Christ wants us to serve? That's good. God always knows the right questions to ask us, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, for sure. 
<laughs> I love that. And uh, all at the same time. So I get that. Yep. Okay. So uh, the last question I have is, <clears throat> so if you had to pick one word that you hope kind of describes at the end of this transition team period, where we're at, what, what is that one word and why? Rapture. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, the word that, I, that came to me when I was thinking about this question is clarity. And um, clarity uh, of who we are as individuals in Christ, we all have to examine ourselves and really find out what our true motives and, and uh, strengths and weaknesses are in Christ. And I think as a body of Christ, we need to have clarity of who we are as a church family. Where, where are we? Where does God want us to be? And I think we really have to um, peel those layers back and have a look and see what Christ is in store for us, not only individually, because I really believe the change in the church starts in each one of us mm -hmm. as an individual. Right. And so I've been praying, Lord, start the revival in me and, and may that spread. And uh, the reason why I picked clarity was that uh, if you look it up in the dictionary, it, it means a, a coherent and intelligible and it has a quality of transparency, uh, transparency and purity. And in brackets, it says crystal clear. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a lot of things that we do even in the functioning and running of our church, that is not crystal clear. And, you know, we, we look at our guidelines, our uh, church constitution, and lots of people have different interpretations of what does that mean in the body of Christ. And so I think moving ahead, we need to look at those types of things so that there is crystal clear and clarity on how we deal and do our business in the church. But more importantly, who are we as spiritual people? Mm, that's good. That's a great word. That's awesome. Well, thanks for your time today, uh, Gord. And so just a reminder, uh, March 16 is the vote day for Transition Team. So blessings on you and we'll talk soon. Thanks, Garth. It's been a pleasure. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Jen, another Transition Team nominee. Hi, Jen. How are you? Thanks. That's good. <laughs> So, uh, Jen, let's start off. Uh, uh, why don't you introduce yourself um, and sort of your FBC background? All right. My name is Jen, Jen Hawker, and I've been attending First Baptist for about 16 or 17 years since I've been married to Chuck and maybe even a little bit before that um, attending. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so transition team, what's sort of the, your process? What's the Lord kind of laid on your heart or sort of got you to this point where it's like, yes, my name can go on the nominee list? Uh, well, since probably the spring or summer of last year, I've been, the spirit has really been laying it on my heart every time that I've thought about kind of sitting back and watching what unfolds. I've felt quite a pull to, uh, to be a part of progress and moving forward, um, whether that be through just that feeling that you get from the spirit. It's unexplainable. You just feel it and you know it. Mm -hmm. You can't dismiss it uh, through scripture, like through reading um, my daily readings, just having things pop out and hit me in the face like, Okay. And just through conversations with people, I've really felt um, that this is a time to, for myself, to be a uh, part of moving forward and uh, to just see this all through and get us to a place where we're ready for a senior pastor and some new leadership. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And, and, and I'm glad you're following that tugging on the heart, right? The Lord does that with us. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> The, the last question then is this one word that you would like to see happen through this process. Okay. What's so the, uh, the two words were progress mm -hmm. and vision. Those are the two that came to mind. Okay. Uh, there could be lots of explanation behind it, but uh, well, why don't you give us a little bit of the explanation. <laughs> a little bit of an explanation um, for kind of vision is I just really hope to see a focus um, on our core values going forward um, and just 
really feeling, feeling God's grace and uh, sharing it with each other through any um, forward movement that we're doing. And I just, uh, yeah, through the progress, I'm hoping to see, you know, all of us living at peace with each other and uh, encouraging one another because we share this love for God and we can do nothing else but love each other and encourage each other. <laughs> well said, those are good progress and vision. So I love it. Well, thanks, Jen, um, for your time. And we will talk with you soon. Okay. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome back to a uh, nominee for transition team interview. I've got Kim with me. So uh, Kim, uh, tell us, uh, introduce yourself and a little bit of FBC background. Sure. Um, my name is Kim Jackson, and I've been at First Baptist for, I think this is my 21st year. Um, I had the opportunity to uh, go through, you know, my teens at the church and through youth group and young adults. And um, now my kids are starting through that and in Sunday school and everything. So um, I've had a, a little bit of history with First Baptist. Yeah, that's cool. I moved too much when my kids were younger, so I didn't have that option to go back to the same church I grew up in. So that's neat. Um, so transition team and uh, your name as a nominee, what, let us know what kind of what the Lord sort of spoke to your heart and what's your process yeah. for all this. Yeah, well, I mean, I find we've had a big year at our church. I mean, that's no, no secret to anyone. Um, it's been hard, but uh, I think that there's been a lot of positive things as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we have a lot of really amazing things to come. So I think throughout the last year, since sort of everything shut down and we stopped being able to meet in person, um, I felt like my call, my role was to just pray, to just be patient, to just be present and to pray for the church, for our church family. And, and that's where I felt um, that was the role that, that God laid out for me. And so that's what I did. Um, more recently at, at our um, last town hall meeting, or I guess our first town hall meeting, um, I started having more questions uh, and some of the, the issues coming up that were really laid on my heart. And uh, so I started asking questions just to, to learn more about what was going on and questions about, you know, uh, what was causing division and heartache in our church. Um, so, and that's sort of the point where I reached out to you, Garth, and, and asked my questions, and we just had a, a good open dialogue. Um, but I don't think that there are answers yet to all of those questions. So I've started to feel much more called to take action. You know, I God has made things very clear along the way, you know, to when to to sit and pray and be patient and when to take action. And I, I really felt called to now offer my, my support. And, you know, when I asked you where I can serve it, the doors started to open and this transition team was one of those doors. So, um, you know, it, it just became a, what seemed like a good avenue to, to offer the gifts that God gave me to serve our church in this process that we're going through of just healing and, and growth. So, um, so I'm just following where, where I believe God wants me to go right now. And um, it seems to be serving on this transition team. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, from a, a practical point of view as well, um, I've been involved with other uh, nonprofit organizations in the past. And I have some familiarity with the government side of that, um, the Societies Act. And um, I, th I, I hope that having some familiarity and my experience in that way can be valuable mm. on this team. Because I know just how, what, what's required of us by the government and what the membership needs of us are really important 
things that both need to be considered. And hopefully my experience can, can help this team a little bit in that regard. That's cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. I love the foundation of prayer over the year, right? Like, and, and, and who knows where that leads you, right? You just dedicate to that. And yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Thank you. So that, uh, the question, the last question then about what's the one word that would best describe your hope or vision for this season with the transition that we're going into? I would, it's hard, honestly, it was hard to, to pick one word because That's I have so I many words, <laughs> I have so many words for what's on my heart and, and, and where I think we're headed and what I I think God wants for us. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the one that I landed on is restoration. Mm. It, doesn't, it doesn't really need an explanation. It's pretty self-explanatory, but you know, there's been complicated situations and complicated emotions um, over this, this period of time. But I think that just trusting Christ to restore us is so uncomplicated yeah and that's that i believe that's just where we're headed well there's nothing else to add to that that was that was very good so thank you kim i appreciate you for sharing all that and uh we'll talk to you soon great thank you okay hi everyone uh we're back with another transitional team nominee so john uh why don't you introduce yourself and let us know how long you've been around fbc Oh, my name is John Taylor, and uh, my wife and I have uh, been attending First Baptist Church for almost 20 years now. And uh, we attended after I, we moved to Nanaimo after I took early retirement in 2001. Nice. So uh, we're here talking about the transition team. What kind of led you to have your name stand as a nominee for the transition team, John? I read through the ter- uh, transition teams of uh, re- terms of reference, and really it led me to feel that uh, both my work experience and my time at uh, First Baptist Church could be of value to help the team meet their objectives. That's good. That's I just good. maybe expand on that a little bit more. Uh, yeah, please do. Um, I was a senior advisor at Petro Canada in the area of uh, fuel quality and, and the environment. And over the last 15 years, a good chunk of my work was uh, dealing on government and industry, inter-industry committees uh, on ways to change fuel specifications to help uh, mitigate uh, both transportation fuel impact and heating fuel impact on the environment. So I not only represented Petro Canada on these committees, but I was the uh, one of the uh, members of the uh, oil industry team as well. So I represented the whole industry, not just Petro Canada. At First Baptist Church, I've been uh, involved in a number of areas of church life since uh, coming. I served on council for a number of years. I uh, served as a moderator. I was a head of three council commissions, finance, property management, and uh, the prime timers, property management and liability and risk. And I'm actually a member of uh, three different commissions at the present time, uh, property, uh, finance, and uh, uh, our prime timers commission. That really is not active at the current time, but uh, it certainly served a role in the church. I am a member of the elders board for one term. I was chairman of the building expansion committee I was a member of the pastoral search committee that led to the calling of Pastor Randy Baker to serve in our church. I helped to rewrite the latest version of our constitution and bylaws and uh, helped bring them into line with the 2018 revisions to the BC Societies Act. And I've been involved in uh, small group ministry in First Baptist Church since uh, basically since we first started coming sometimes as a leader and we're currently my wife and i currently are a member of a small group right wow it's too bad you uh you don't spend your time serving at fbc shame on you (laughs) (laughs) 
Okay, so the, the harder question in all this is, so at the end of this transition team period, what's what's one word that you describe as kind of the, the best or ho most hopeful outcome you'd like to see? As I thought about this, I, you know, I could have, if you would have asked me to give you a paragraph or a page, <laughs> I probably could have given you a, a page of what I would have liked to see the outcomes of this uh, committee to, to, to be, but uh, a team to be. But really, um, to distill it into one word, the word that comes to mind is wisdom. And mm. uh, I'd like to read from First Kings chapter 3, and I think this is appropriate for us at the present time. And starting at verse 5, it says, At Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon during the night in a dream. And God said, Ask for whatever you want me to give you. And Solomon responds and said, Now, O Lord, my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. But I am only a little child and do not know how to carry out my duties. And he goes on to ask God for wisdom. And I think the commentary that goes on in the Bible, in my Bible, about this passage is relevant to our transition team and it's uh, takes uh it refers to chap uh, james chapter 3 verses 13 to 17 and it says according to james the wisdom of god when used properly cultivates peaceful relationships the type of wisdom god gives takes into account the interests of others it is characterized by sincerity the wisdom of god helps people become more objective in their decision making this was the type of wisdom that Solomon asked for and received from God. The wisdom described in these verses enables Solomon to ask probing questions and make knowledgeable decisions. This is a type of wisdom available to anyone who simply asks God for it. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the uh, objective, is, I'll take my glasses off and you can see I'll be representing the elders uh, <laughs> part of this team if I voted in. But uh, the things that uh, are objectives, the four objectives that are lined out in the in the terms of restaurants are healing and restoration, better communications, constitution and bylaw review, and recommendation for change if necessary, and vision of ministry. I think these are areas where we really need to have the team within the team praying for God's wisdom so that they can come up with meaningful recommendations in each of these areas and also to have the congregation praying for the transition team to have the ministry that God, or to have the vision and wisdom that God would give to the team necessary to carry out their functions. That's good. Uh, very good. Fantastic, John. Thank you. So I appreciate your time today and just a reminder to everyone that um, Tuesday, March 16th is the vote for the transition team. So thanks everyone. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another session of Get to Know Your Transition Team Nominees. I'm here with Valerie. So, Val, why don't you introduce yourself and let people know how long you've been around FBC, which is probably forever, but go ahead and tell us. My forever? Yeah. Um, I've gone to church to FBC since 1988 when I was two. Uh, our family moved from Toronto and I guess checked out a few churches and then ended up landing at First Baptist. So um, it's the church my grandparents, my mom, my aunt, and now myself and my kids uh, go to as well. So yeah, the 32 years now. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that length of time. Um, okay, so I'm very curious to know what's the Lord put on your heart about this whole transition team and this time and putting your name forward. Why don't you fill us in on that? Yeah, well, um, I feel very called and led to just help. So wherever, um, wherever I can help, I feel that I want to help. So that I've been helping with the advanced team a little bit, and um, it's there are many gifted people on that team who who serve well and have great ideas. And I felt the Lord maybe calling me um, to a different type of way that I can help in this time. So um, when I was approached about putting my name forward for the transitional team, I, you know, I just prayed and I felt maybe that I could be a help here. Um, yeah. So I just think that God has been, God has given me a lot of ideas in many areas of my life and church has always been one of them. I have um, 
I have ideas for programs and for ways that we can be together and ways to love each other. And, um, and I'm excited to work with a team of other people who have other ideas. Yeah. Nice. So the one question I've been asking everyone is to try and put uh, what one word best describes your, <coughs> excuse me, your hope, uh, your vision for the uh, transition team. And then you can tell us a little bit of background about that one word. Sure. Well, if you know me, one word is not an easy thing for me. <laughs> Garth, you've only known me for a little while, and I think you know that. Um, so I'm reading it over here on another window because I, I had to think. So I was torn between the words unity mm -hmm. and the words mission. So unity feels uh, like it's necessary and vital just to, to exist with a body of believers. Mm -hmm. I feel that I want to... Uh, encourage unity and in any way I, I serve and anything that our church is involved in. But that just feels like a tiny step into mission, which I just want to be united with my brothers and sisters. And I just have this picture of holding hands and going out together into the world, knowing that we are all different. We don't have to have the exact same thought about everything, but a united in the love of Jesus and the desire to serve him with our mission. So I think mission is really the word that, um, standing on a platform of unity, firm on the foundation of Jesus. But with this mission, it's exciting to think of getting past lots of things and moving into our mission and uh, and knowing that Jesus is coming back and just uh, doing his work all over the world. So mission is probably the word that that's I would awesome. use. No, that's good. That's good. Well, thanks for your time, Val. And uh, everyone knows, I think by now, but March 16th is voting day. So uh we look forward to doing the work ahead of us. Thanks, Val. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. Bye.